Okay, sometimes you want to determine the concentration of a species you need to reach the saturation point. I know how much of one ion I have. I want to know how much of the second one I can put before I reach that saturation point and form a precipitate. Let's look at the following example. What is the concentration of calcium needed to form a saturated solution of calcium phosphate containing 1 times 10 to the negative 5th molarity of phosphate ions? Okay, so what we're saying here is I have some flask. In that flask, I have 1 times 10 to the negative 5th molarity of phosphate ions. Okay. I want to know how much calcium I can add to that before I form um, past the saturation point and then start forming calcium phosphate. So I want to know how much calcium I can put in there. Okay, how much calcium can I put into this container before that calcium and phosphate reach its saturation point? Okay, reach that saturation point and then form calcium phosphate. So what we're looking at here is a uh, KSP problem. So I got to write my equilibrium. I got my calcium phosphate. Got my calcium phosphate, which breaks up into three calcium two ions, then two phosphate ions. The way this problem's looking, uh, I have the amount of phosphate given to me. I know how much I have, and I'm trying to figure out how much calcium is there. So my goal is to figure out how much calcium I need with the amount of phosphate I have to reach that saturation point. Now, here's where I was talking about the uh, um, ratio back in homework set number 40. Told me to get a wide set. Back in homework set 40, we said I had so much molar solubility of a substance, all right, lead to iodide it was. And then I wanted to know how much iodide was there. So it was a two to one ratio, so I had to double the amount of lead to iodide to get my concentration of iodide. This is totally different. In this problem, they're saying I contain one times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. That's all I have. So that is my concentration. I'm not going to use that two and three of the calcium and phosphate to do any relationship between that and calcium phosphate because I'm trying to figure out um, how much calcium I can add to this based on KSP. Okay? That one times 10 to the negative fifth molarity of phosphate, that's all I have in the flask. If I put a two and multiply it, the question comes up, where's the other two, the other one times 10 to the negative fifth coming from? Okay, there's nowhere, no source of it. Okay, so this amount is all I have in that flask, is all I have is one times 10 to the negative fifth molarity of phosphate ions. So because the way this problem's worded, I'm not going to double it. That doubling is based on relationship between phosphate and calcium phosphate um, to my 2 to 1 ratio. All this is saying is, okay, if I take any phosphate, I need two of them. I need two parts of phosphate coming from that and three parts of my calcium to equal one calcium phosphate. Okay, Basically, you can look at it as that one times 10 to negative fifth is my source, my pool of phosphate ions that I'm taking two of them from, three calcium to form my calcium phosphate. So continuing on with the problem, we know that KSP is equal to one times 10 to the negative third, which is equal to the concentration of calcium cubed. Okay, remember I account for that coefficient. Time the phosphate concentration to the square, which is I'm accounting for that two in my um, relationship, which gives me equal to my calcium concentration cubed. Time the concentration of my phosphate, which we know is one times 10 to the negative fifth. And that value is squared. Mathematically, continuing on, We get calcium, uh, I'll take that um, 1 times 10 to the negative fifth squared and multiply that on both, or divide that by both sides to get that over underneath my KSP value. 
So that gives me calcium cubed is equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 33rd divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 5th squared, which gets me 1 times 10 to the negative 23rd. Now I want to get rid of the cubed. Okay, So what we're going to do mathematically is take the cube root of both sides, which then gives me my concentration of calcium to be 2 times 10 to the negative 8th molarity. So that means if I take and I add 2 times 10 to the negative 8 molarity of calcium, and that could be in any format, calcium chloride, calcium acetate, whatever it may be. Okay, When I get the concentration of my calcium up to 2 times 10 to the negative 8, okay, and I already have 1 times 10 to the negative 5th phosphate, I will be at the saturation point, and then I will precipitate out my calcium phosphate. Okay, I will precipitate out calcium phosphate at that point. So once the concentration of calcium gets to 2 times 10 to the negative 8, I will precipitate out my salt. Now, one thing to keep in mind is how to do this cube root on your calculator. Yes, some calculators have the cube root sign on it, but the question comes in, what if you got to do a fourth root or a fifth root or a sixth root? Okay, you don't have that on the calculator. There's a couple of options. Okay. One, you can do a y to the x, okay, which would mean in this case you could do a y to the 1 divided by 3 or 0.333 if you want to do the math in your head, okay. So you're taking that cube and doing the one third of it. If it was to the fourth root, it'd be y to the 1 divided by 4 or y to the 0.25, okay. Or you could use the caret. Okay, you take that number, in this case it'd be 1 times 10 to the negative 23rd carat 1 divided by 3. Okay, or carat 0.333. Or sometimes the calculator has an x square root of y function. x square root of y. You have to get a hold of your calculator and look at it and decide what is the best way to do it. So what you should do is do this problem right here. And even if you have a cube root button, try to do it without the cube root button to see if you can get the correct answer. Because you're going to run into other numbers which you don't have on your calculator to the 4th, to the 5th, to the 6th, etc. So see if you can make this calculation, okay, and go from here to here using one of these procedures, okay, one of these other techniques on your calculator. Now if you have an expensive calculator, you may have to look in a table to find the x square root of, uh, square root of y function. But make sure you know how to use your calculator to get this, this answer. Now, if the solubility product constant KSP is known, then we can determine the solubility of a compound. Okay, Kind of like we did in the past chapters where we figured out KA and eventually we use KA. Or we figured out KC and then we eventually use KC to do calculations. The water solubility, okay, the water solubility of an ionic compound is the amount of compound that dissolves per unit of volume of saturated solution, and we typically use the units of grams per liter. Okay, so when we're talking about solubility, it's grams per liter. Now, if we talk about solubility and we're using moles per liter, then we refer to that as the molar solubility. Okay, and most of the time we calculate the molar solubility um, based on our calculations because we plug it in. Uh, concentrations into our KSP expression. However, sometimes you might want the solubility, which is the case in the next example we're going to do. I want to do it in grams per liter because I want to show you something when we get finished that calculation. So we still got to go through and get molar solubility to get to our solubility. Let's look at an example. The mineral fluoride is calcium fluoride. Calculate the solubility, and in this case I want grams per liter, of calcium fluoride in water from the KSP, which is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11. Okay. Well, the same thing we used to do with the soluble salts. We're going to take our insoluble salt and write that equal to them first. So you got calcium fluoride breaks up into calcium ions and fluoride ions. Now, our goal is the solubility of our species. So, um, while well, goal is to form get the solubility of calcium fluoride. I don't know what that value is, but I'm trying to calculate it. So let's see if I can come up with some relationship. If I knew the solubility of calcium fluoride was S, then how much calcium would I have? Mole to mole ratio is going to be what? 
1 to 1, which is S. Well, if I knew the molar solubility of calcium fluoride was S, how much fluoride would I have? 2S, because there's a 1 to 2 ratio. So in other words, we're going to um, let S be the molar solubility of calcium fluoride, and we'll use that as our relationship to determine our concentration of calcium and fluoride, which means that I will have S amount of calcium at equilibrium, and I will have amount of 2S of uh, fluoride at equilibrium. Now these values of S and 2S are related through some equilibrium constant, which is KSP. So I'll write my KSP which is KSP is equal to the concentration of calcium to the first power times the co concentration of fluoride to the second power. Plug in our values, S for calcium and 2S for fluoride, which gets us 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11 is equal to S times 2S squared. Now you got to square the whole term, which means that 2 is squared as well as that S, which means I have S 4S squared which then means S times that will give 4S2 will give me 4S cubed. Now I want to solve for S, so the next step will be to get S by itself. Um, so we'll take this 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11 equals 4S cubed, and now we're going to divide by 4 on both sides. We'll divide by 4 on both sides to get it down to just S cubed. So we divide by 4 on both sides, which gets us s cubed is equal to 3.4 times 10 to the negative 11 divided by 4. Now I want to get rid of the cube, so I'll take the cube root of both sides, which then gets me s is equal to the cube root of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 11 divided by 4, which mathematically gives me 2.0 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. Now what does S represent in our problem? It represented two different things. It represented the concentration of calcium as well as the concentration of calcium fluoride, which is what we're looking for, right? So this cal concentration of calcium fluoride is my molar solubility, which is what we're looking for. However, we're looking for it as solubility, so it's not the right unit. Now, just to let you know, if you wanted to calculate the concentration of fluoride ion, we said that would be 2 times S, so you would 2 times that 2 times 10 to the negative 4th, which gets you 4 times 10 to the negative 4th molarity. And that's something that's important to us in this problem, but I just wanted to let you know. So this equals our molar solubility of calcium fluoride. However, we wanted solubility, so how would I get from molar solubility to solubility? Well, that's the difference between mole and grams, which we go through molar mass. Continue on the calculation, using molar mass of calcium fluoride being 78.1 grams per mole. I got 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth moles per liter of calcium fluoride. Molar mass, 78.1 grams of calcium fluoride per every one mole. That way my moles cancel, which then gets me my molar, my, excuse me, my solubility to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative second grams. Calcium fluoride per liter, which is the same thing as saying 0 0.016 grams of calcium fluoride per liter, which is my answer. Now that is the solubility. As I said, most of the time we calculate molar solubility, uh, but I wanted to just do solubility because I wanted to do one more thing here to show you something about, make sure you understand what solubility saturation point means. Okay, Say I had a liter container, got a one liter container, Okay, and I add 0 0.015 grams of calcium fluoride to that one liter solution. What's going to happen to that 0 0.015 grams of calcium fluoride? Well, I'm going to have 0 0.015 grams of calcium ions and fluoride ions floating around, okay, in a 2 to 1 uh, mole ratio, okay. How much solid am I going to have? Zero. So I'm, all I'm going to have is that amount in solution. All of it's going to be ions, okay, because I'm below the saturation point. I'm below that 0.016 grams limit of calcium fluoride in that one liter of solution. Now, let's say I now, instead of doing 0 0.015 grams, let's put 0 0.016 grams of calcium fluoride. What's going to happen? Well, I'm still going to have 0 0.016 grams of calcium fluoride ions, okay, ions, floating around. 
I'm right at the saturation point. I'm at the saturation point. I'm right at that point where I will start seeing some precipitation. So it's still all in that as a solution. There's still no solid being formed. Okay, let's go past the saturation point. Okay, let's go 0 0.0165 grams of calcium fluoride. Okay, what's going to happen there? Well, I'm going to have 0 0.016 grams of calcium. Let me kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay. I have 0 0.016 grams of calcium ions and fluoride ions in solution, but I also have 0 0.005 grams of calcium fluoride solid, precipitate, Okay, because I'm past the saturation point. So I wanted you to get an idea of what's happening when we talk about saturation point and what this molar solubility value is telling us, and I thought you'd see it a little easier in mass. Homework 41 deals with calculating the molar solubility of insoluble salts.